Hello, I'm Sally Ann Ashley. I'm a UK based abstract artist and I also run a course for artists and creatives called Creative Shift. Creative Shift is a 10 week program based on my own creative practice of navigating the shifts in my work. Each time I become stuck in the studio or frustrated, I now have a framework that I can apply each time my work evolves. I've now shared my framework with many artists and witnessed numerous shifts on both the personal and practical level. I hear artists talking about how free they feel in their work, how much more confident they feel, how courageous they are in the studio. So if you're wondering if creative shifts for you this year, I've interviewed some previous course members and asked them to share a little bit about their experience on the course and how it impacted their practice in the hope that it'll answer some questions that you have. I hope you enjoy the videos. And if you have any questions, please contact me on the links below. Thank you. Today I'm chatting with Susie Richardson. Susie joined Creative Shift last year and I've invited her here today to share a little bit about her experience on the course and how it's impacted her practice since. So hello Susie, welcome. Hi Sally Ann, so good to be here. Good to see you again. Okay, so if we could just start, if you could tell me a little bit about your creative practice and how long you've been creating for. For sure. Um, so I started making visual art 20 years ago after having my primary creative outlet be poetry. I Well, poetry and short stories I was writing. Um, that was a time uh, when I had young children and poetry worked because I had little bit of time. And I, I didn't see myself as a visual artist. I, I loved studios. We, um, I remember being on in college and walking past the art studios wistfully thinking, well, too bad I missed my boat. Um, this isn't for me. I, everybody comes here already knowing how to do art and just gets better at it. And so the, this, I, I was attracted to it, but I never imagined that visual art would be in my future. And um, as it happened, my um, art group, I mean, my writing group met in the same um, space in a, in a bookstore as a, a women's art group. And one friend um, was in those groups in common. And she was there in my poetry group when I came and shared a very amazing experience I had of having had a dream. It was actually New Year's this time of year, um, literally New Year's Eve, I had into New Year's Day, I had a dream where I saw in big uh, capital letters outlined in black, the word moment. And it was my job to fill in those empty letters with images of people living in the moment. And it's crazy. I'd never had anything like that happen to me. Um, but I took it seriously. And it turned out that our craft store was open on, on New Year's Day, and I got the supplies and I was never as content as in the three months that I worked on collaging, filling in with tiny images, um, these words. And it was a pretty cool piece that resulted from that. It was, it, it inspired me. It was clear to me that this was about living in the moment. So there was this sort of uh, spiritual element that came to me and that was, that was the catalyst. That's where I got going. And I did join the art group and it, it was these, this was also um, a time where online mixed media was taking off in terms of people leading groups um uh some were well most were actually free there was a lot of videos turning up and i just dove right in somerset studio was a magazine here in the united states cloth paper scissors that offered tons of instruction and i just could not get enough of it all and within a very short time i had the opportunity because i was with this group to exhibit and I mostly did collage, but really mixed media. There was nothing I didn't want to try and do. Um, and so over the years, um, I got a little more focused at times on some things, a little more on other things, but ultimately mixed media, um, I didn't see any reason not to put it all together. Sometimes I take a live course, sometimes an online one. Um, you know, fast forward to um, a year before 
um, I started um, Creative Shift with you, um, I was feeling, you know, like every everyone, I'd have lulls, I'd have sometimes I'd have maybe a show, a group show where I thought, well, that's, that'll push me to make something. Um, but I had a very restless feeling inside me, a, a feeling of, um, that I was just dabbling. Um, and yet I felt like I had as a self-taught artist really honed a lot of my skills. Um, I felt very capable in many ways. I felt like given the opportunity, I could produce mm -hmm. something um, that others could appreciate too, but I didn't have a consistent practice. I didn't always identify. I, I certainly understood and I, I, you know, I claimed the title artist, but um, I felt a little bit um, um, like, there was there were there was me and my category of type of artist, um, maybe maybe hobbyist, um, even though I understood that this was also part of my identity. Um, and um, yet, um, there were the serious artists over there, you know. Okay. That, and I just thought, wow, you know, I. I kind of want to be that. I I I want to be a serious artist. Um, I want to do that. Um, my responsibilities um, had slowly been um, shed that had consumed a lot of my time and energy. And I just thought, well, well, why not? But yeah, why not? But I had like, I really didn't quite know how to go okay. about that. Even when I had studio space, I didn't really, to, the self-motivation was sometimes there. Um, sometimes a little external from a course or something like that. So I ended up actually taking um, Louise Fletcher's Find Your Joy because that sounded like, wow, she's speaking to a lot of mm -hmm. um, a lot of what I seem to be looking for. And it was, in fact, a very, very great experience. Um, and I had a lot of energy and I, I filled a lot of gaps, um, which was terrific. Um, I also as a result, started a regular sketchbook practice. Um, through Louise, I was introduced to you, actually, which okay. was terrific. And I really, there was something immediately um, that about you and your approach to art making, I think it was a video um, offered in Louise's Art Tribe, but at the very least, um, I liked your approach of a playbook and what I sensed and and ended up really, um, that ended up being true the more I got to know about you and your work is that you, you had an approach to art making and to sharing that, that seemed to be grounded to me in principles that I found invaluable in my life um, which were um, mindfulness practices. Um, and um, I, prior to Find Your Joy, I had spent an entire year really training in mindfulness. I had a great um, oh, wow. uh, format for doing that. It was wonderful. It was actually um, a really great course by uh, Dr. Judd Brewer called Unwinding Anxiety that is app based. And he has a book by the same title. But I really dedicated myself to under to to practicing and um and learning as really deeply immersed. And that foundation led to a degree of self-awareness and sort of helped me shed um a lot of superficial mm. um well, what I recognized to be superficial fears, um, but they were stum real stumbling blocks often to um everything from seeing things clearly to literally uh, just being frozen and not knowing where to go ahead. Um, you know, anxiety and fear can do that. And these were, it was a great skill set, but it was more than just a skill set. It was a way of experiencing life yeah. um, differently. Mm -hmm. And so I had that foundation. And mm -hmm. so hearing elements that overlapped um, really spoke to me. I felt like, wow, um, I, 
I I did start after Find Your Joy um, a regular sketchbook practice, which and I, and I did really understand begin to understand that being an artist was more than um, what I imagined it might be in terms of you know being in a studio and producing big bodies of work for gallery shows, et cetera, et cetera, or maybe, you know, um, doing art shows um, on the green and being out there with the other vendors and everything else. And um, there, there was, I had started to gain an appreciation, but I found myself even with the sketchbook work still feeling like, um, now what? <laughs> now what? Um, there were actually for me, I think too many possibilities. Mm -hmm. And that's something that you um, address um, definitely and fairly early on um, in the class mm -hmm. um, in, in Creative Shift that was very important for me. How do you reduce the overwhelm? Yeah. Um, when you get excited by every new shiny <laughs> thing, as I do, it's like, you know, um, then it's like, oh, I've got to try those. Those those markers are really exciting. Look what happens when you put water on them. And then I have a new set of markers and then I have a new new kind of fluid paint. And um, and then even in considering um um, I realized that, oh, look, I've learned that I can actually do abstract painting, which was something that had fascinated me. I love abstract work uh, for its expressiveness. And um, I just found it absolutely beautiful. But I had tried doing that work with oil and cold wax. And while I loved the materials, I, I just absolutely loved them. I, I still didn't really quite understand how to bring a painting to resolution mm. um and these the tools were starting to add up but i had too much i had mm. absolutely too much to choose from and found myself just sort of um you know just paddling just paddling um, yes yeah. so would you would you say that was your main reason for joining creative shift was it because you had a lot going on and you just, what were you looking for? Just yeah, clarity. I, definitely, it was, some of it was community. Honestly, um, I I missed, um, I really loved um, the discussion groups, um, the online work with other artists who were stretching themselves, mm -hmm. who were smart and um, looking to understand their craft. Um, I loved the parts of other coursework I had done where we touched on the creative process, but I just, so, so the idea that we could have, so I could have something not add to, mm -hmm. yeah. I did, I didn't need more things, uh, more, more tools, more materials, more techniques. I had yeah. too many in a lot of ways. Um, what I, what I gravitated to was the opportunity to really explore creativity and I still needed more fine tuning. Mm -hmm. I still needed to hone what what was it in me? What what did I have to say? Yeah. And I could go back to that earliest of beginnings um, that pulled me into making things visually and say, well, here's here's something that, you know, like you the idea of being in the moment, um, pre being present, um, being aware and mindful, um, these are things you value, but I didn't really understand how yeah. that could possibly, I, I didn't think of that particularly consciously and connect it mm -hmm. to how, how do I move forward? And, okay. and I had a sense that your course which focused on the creative process could bring me closer to that I I felt hopeful okay. that I might go closer to that okay so um that translates nicely into um what was your experience of the course incredible <laughs> in a word it was truly incredible because um 
the the very first couple of of um, lessons were quite intense for many of us. Um, I am someone who has done a lot of self exploration over time, be it through therapy, um, be it through journaling. Uh, it's something I'm interested in, and I think that. Um, all of us doing that together came to it from a different point in time, from a different place and a different set of experiences. Mm -hmm. For me, even having done that, I was blown away by how quickly through the lens of art and being an artist, how quickly and I would say in a very focused way, you guided us to peel back even more layers in terms of what what is it that that we're about that will translate into meaningful artwork mm -hmm. um, that comes out of our essence and it's just staggering um, that my favorite thing, my favorite thing by far that was a huge help for me is that um, we did a mind map and people might know what that is. Um, it's a it's a tool that I wish I had been introduced to earlier in my life because it's an actual uh, reflection of exactly how my mind operates. And this mind map, um, as we sort of uh, responded to questions which you had posed that we're trying to get at what is meaningful um, to us, what do we value, um, what matters in our life, this was a means of getting that out of this um, nebulous place of this floaty kind of place of like sensing and knowing a little bit, but naming it and putting mm -hmm. it down on paper. And I have my, my, an early one here. Um, and oh, wow. you know, it, looks, it looks like it would look, you know, but, but the piece of it that um the questions you had posed that I used to guide this particular mind map were what inspires you and what ideas have really engaged you. And I took one at a time and, and at the center, I have the word spirituality. And um, it was the best thing in the world to be able to just literally just toss, toss it all out. I mean, you, you saw it was just something here and something here. And I circled this and there's an arrow going here. And, and then it, it was, it was just putting everything out there um, that, popped into my head. And even as that went on, once I had one word, oh, wow, that's sort of a category. So then when something related came up, I could put it there. And phew, it was this amazing feeling of, wow, mm -hmm. I, I really could express not in paragraph form, not in mm -hmm. a linear fashion, but in the way that my mind had all these things come up that on the surface didn't necessarily seem related, right? Mm -hmm. But um, but in fact, once I did the map, um, I could see what went together, and it it was very thrilling to me to yeah. to work that way. It was very Amazing. thrilling. Um, and what I could do afterwards is then look at this, um, and then I was able to put it into. Um, lists with categories so if i had a section that talked about living in the moment mm -hmm. um anything that had fallen under there then i could put yeah. it down so so it was just another way then of organizing it but yeah. but um it was a very satisfying tool and that's something that is a gift that for me is going to go way forward yeah. in my life um i think this is part of the learnings isn't it learning what what works for us to get the information out so you know like you say if if you don't I think well when we have to put things in paragraphs or structure them in a certain way we're already editing 
we're already right. editing as things come. So working in this, um, I mean, I think I give a few options because I know not everybody's going to work in the same way. It's not going to work for everybody. But if this does work for you and like for you, it did, you can just, it's kind of a way of just like, yeah, expressing and brainstorming and just throwing things out. I actually find it like a really cleansing process because otherwise everything we don't even realize that things are stuck in our heads or you know so the reason I like things like this and you touched on it there the my playbook earlier the reason for that it's kind of like doing that but in a visual way like everything comes out that's been there and I my kind of theory around this is if you can keep like emptying yourself of all these thoughts and ideas or you know working in this way that we can keep things clear and we can keep a rhythm and it's easier to flow things out like if you do your mind map again some of the same things are going to come up but some there's space now for new things that have come into your life or into your mind so it's a way of just this um, a way of processing our thoughts and ideas to give us like a, a picture of where we're at at that moment. Um, and I love the way that you said then you took it to f- like further categorize it because that's a, a next level of like the bringing clarity to these thoughts and ideas. So, yeah, it was, that. that's how it worked for me. Absolutely. And I love your word cleansing because that's what I was trying to get at. It was, it, it is, it's almost a relief. Mm-hmm. Um, because we do like depending like say in this case I wasn't really um taking a problem I had it was a a category of things a sub a uh, topic that I'd given reams of thought to in the course of my life right but I'd never you know sat down to really you know think about it yeah. Um, di- directly this way. And I could have, but I think I would have been way slower. Yes. If I had, and the self-editing that you talk about, mm-hmm. I would have definitely been doing that. Um, you, yeah. especially as somebody who's, you know, had practice at working towards a finished written product, you know, um, yes. there is mm-hmm. that, uh, wait a second, I didn't really mean that. Let me, you know, and, and it breaks the flow. Was, um, yeah, it's kind of, yeah, it's breaking oh, up that, it's breaking your norms, isn't it, to see? And then it's like, oh, okay. And then we allow the opportunity for, you know, another way of thinking, another perspective. And uh, because the exercises are set by somebody else as well, it sort of forces you to just readjust your normal patterns, I guess. Um, mm-hmm. Absolutely. Okay. So, um, I'm dying to know, did anything shift for you? <laughs> no, it did. And I, I will say, though, that um, it wasn't necessarily obvious. If you take a course called Creative Shift, as you move along, you're going to be asking yourself, uh, you know, um, hmm, is something shifting? <laughs> uh, what might be shifting? Has my um, perspective on something shifted based on information and conversation and and everything um, else. I think one of the biggest, I think it was subtle for me. Um, I know that others, some others in the class maybe had um, some, sometimes um, there were really cool examples of a dramatic shift. I think that can happen. Um, for me, um, and, and I, I gave the example earlier, for, for instance, for people who hadn't done a lot of self-examination before, um, I think in particular, um, it can be very intense and feel very dramatic. But dramatic doesn't mean necessarily more or less or less significant. Um, it just wasn't flashy necessarily, but really, really important to me, um, which is that I think approaching 60 years of age, when I had the good fortune to be able to begin, as I said, um, I had mindfulness training, then I had Louise's course, which really um, helped me feel I guess I would possibly use the word professional, but it's less about professionalism than um, 
filling some necessary gaps that I had in understanding some useful tools for how an artist operates um, mm -hmm. that I learned. And that was great. Um, but then, as I said, I'm approaching 60 years old and you kind of feel a little bit of, well, I you start, you do, you start thinking in terms of I have, um, if I'm fortunate, X amount of time left in my life to pursue my art um, fully. Um, this is this is what I've got. And I think I saw it a little bit as a race. And I think that in some ways, ha I felt a kind of pressure having learned and started implementing um, mm -hmm. how to challenge myself and take my work up a notch, for instance, by um, really deeply exploring an aspect of art, be it learning more about contrast or color or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. um, I I could do those things. Um, but you know what? I I don't have to. <laughs> I don't have to. And that's, I it, I was feeling a little bit of pressure of time. Mm -hmm. And I think what I really let go of was external standards, external expectations that I had internalized. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I had really self-imposed a sense that, okay, well, now that you know how to do this, chop, chop, <laughs> let's yeah. go. And, you know, you've only got so much time, you know, start doing it, you know, yeah. start doing it. And, and there was a piece of that. And I think what, what shifted for me was really letting go of any of those um, shoulds in a lot of ways, the things that I saw as being necessary to um, or imagined that if I did in fact want to call myself an artist with a capital A, um, I couldn't just have, you know, I, I, I can't just, there were all these imposed limitations and definitions and really through doing the work um, and doing it in community with a lot of people, you know, and to a, to a person, everyone who participated in our discussions allowed um, herself to be vulnerable mm -hmm. and allowed herself to share um, the challenges and also the, the joys Mm -hmm. of living a life as an artist and I, I think that um I just really learned to trust deeply in that everything I do contributes to me being an artist and living my life true to a gift and a way of being that I could now no no longer and would never want to um, deny and and could really fulfill. I think that's, that's the biggest shift. Crazy. I love that. Wow, that's that feels amazing for you. It really is. So was there um <clears throat> because obviously in creative shift I share a whole structure of tools. Was there a particular moment or a particular tool, or do you think it was just an amalgamation of them? What what was it for you that enabled that? That uh, one of the things that was really helpful, aside from I, I described how excited I am about the mind map. That's really helpful, and that's that's a tool that um, um, I did with all of my shift words. Um, for those who are unfamiliar and and um it's it's a lot better than choosing your word of the year that's all I'll say about it now um and you get 3 and not 1 but you know <laughs> having having these words um that are guide sort of guiding points um emerge from a very rich process of mining your yourself including the mind map um um, those those words or touch touchstones that I could keep coming back to mm -hmm. um, that 
really, um, even now, months later, mine, mine happened to still be very relevant for me, but the mind map is a tool that helped me get there. I could explore each word fully, but um, it will also be a tool, not just a personal one, that if I have a struggle or something will help me. Um, but um, each of the words that we came up with, those hold a lot of value and guidance for me still, having come from me. Um, but I, I know that if they sh well, not not just should they lose sort of their um, juice, as that's a word that um, you use a lot, but their energy and their juice and their relevance. Um, but, you know, I, I know how to find what is central to me in that way in the moment. Mm -hmm. um, but I had mentioned way earlier, one of my big challenges was I had all this stuff, you know, so I did have a, a measure of acceptance um, that it's okay to love it all. It's okay that I might produce work in a variety of styles. Um, that's okay. That's not something that, you know, the voice before might have said, no, 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 you got to just make abstracts now, or no, 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 um, this is a very um, uh, naive style. You need to work in this style if you want and consistently for years, if you want to, you know, do what you're going to do. But, um, but what helps helped me is narrow the parameters. This was a very specific piece of advice. Um, and as we as you taught it to us, um, and showed the merits of doing that on a variety of different levels, um, that's something I come back to often. Um, so um, if I hit a period where um, maybe life has made me steer away from what had been a regular uh, sketchbook practice. So my mind isn't necessarily fully hooked into what I'm doing, but needs to get reoriented to it. Um, then what I did on the last page of the sketchbook might not be calling to me. I now have tools, including narrowing the parameters mm -hmm. to help me have a hook in because what's likely to happen at that moment when I want to, you know, it, it can happen easily that I, I just, the overwhelm just shuts me down. Just mm -hmm. like, well, I don't know. It, it kind of can sap the excitement really. It can sap the joy out of um, it, there, when there's too much, you just can't tell mm -hmm. what you really want to do. It's, I think when we have, it's like decision fatigue, isn't it? And then we end up doing nothing. <laughs> so it's like, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's too many, it's too many things and it's tiring just thinking about where to start, where to begin. So having these tools, like you say, you can go back and really anchor yourself and think, hang on a minute, where am I again? Right here. And then like you describe it, a hook, then you've got a little pathway forward. So That's right. And, and as you, the other piece of advice, um, Another piece of advice that you shared that ties directly in with that is to start where you are. Mm -hmm. And that sort of brings me full circle to having been very attuned to the mindfulness type of orientation, which I sensed in your teaching, um, which, you know, begin again to me are two of the most beautiful words in the English language. I mean, what a gift um, that comes from, you know, if you really, really concentrate and really think about it, um, all we have is this present moment. We're yes. just here right now, right? right? Now. Um, yeah. This is it. And if that's true, then the invitation to begin again is always there. Mm -hmm. um, and beginning again means that we're starting right where we are mm -hmm. and that it's um your guide you know your um instruction to us um that also is really really helpful mm -hmm. um you know if i if i have been away from my practice whether it's you know a week or whether it's 3 months whatever it might be knowing that 
Um, there is the ability to start right where I am. I don't have to pick up where I left off. I don't have to do something ambitious. I don't have to tap into a grand plan that makes me, um, you know, that imaginary professional um, that I came out of, you know, that I, I thought I might need to be. But And that in combination with with narrowing the parameters so that and and this is something that and i to me this is one of the most beautiful things of the course is that by learning to narrow the parameters um of what i'd like to do when the possibilities are endless you know um the sky's the limit i'm spoiled and i have a lot of media i can choose from and um you know, so many pieces can take me closer. Um, starting where I am, I can then narrow um, my parameters in the way that you taught me. I can say, well, let's make it really simple. Let's do black and white today. And yeah. then it will naturally unfold. And slowly, I will get back to that river of intention that runs through me, and it will all just be exactly what it's meant to be yeah I think the beauty about putting all of this together is um exactly what you just described there you're able to now guide yourself through any bumps in the road through any obstacles through any like returning after a break of your practice you you become kind of your own art coach (laughs) you know like what would I do next sort of thing if you're asking somebody else you can now make those decisions for yourself by implementing the tools um, from the course and you've you've got a path immediately, you know, and you're off and running again and you don't have to worry about what's ahead by these tools. Just do this, do this, do this. And before we know it, we naturally are, you know, somewhere else. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> okay. So um, throughout the course, I share um, the modules, new modules each week. Um, how... How long do you think roughly that you spent on the course each week? How much time did it take? Including the time that we um, had discussion, which was usually a couple of hours. Um, They usually lasted two hours. So including that, for me, it was actual active time. I'll distinguish between active and and more passive um, time, but active time I'd say was between three and four hours, including the discussion um, where, and those incidentally are absolutely um, crucial. They're just amazing. They're so rich um, and there's so much validation and um, opportunity to learn about other people's journeys, their journey through the course, and the opportunity also to share things that maybe you've learned along the way. And mm-hmm. we all inform each other in a in a super nurturing environment. So those are amazing. So there's two hours for that. And then I would usually spend between one and two hours um, with the worksheets that you provided, but then they were so, um, and I do that in a sitting typically, that was just my style. I like to kind of dive deeper. And so I would spend um, a dedicated time with that. And, but then the topics throughout the week, I'd sort of come back because once the the theme and the questions were raised, I would invariably be thinking about them and I might jot down another note or see another way in which I could apply it. So I'd say, you know, um, between three and a half and four hours active. Okay, Um, perfect. Yeah. And so if there's somebody sitting watching this video or listening to us um, and they were considering taking creative shift next next year, um, what, what advice would you give to them? Do it. (laughs) <laughs> you need to do this. Do it. Just do it. <laughs> yes, you absolutely need to do this. Um, no, sincerely, I, I, I'm really sincere about that. Um, I, I think it's an an incredibly unique offering that you have, Sally Ann, in the world of ever growing opportunities to learn about um, being an artist. I think that many of us who come to you have taken a lot of online 
courses. Um, they're at various stages of really it doesn't matter even if you haven't frankly but but if you are one of those people who has taken a lot of classes and has a lot of tools but doesn't yet feel as confident in identifying what they what you're you're yearning to express um i think that's a big piece um that you can gain from this. You gain confidence. I definitely gained a lot of confidence in taking the class. Um, the camaraderie and validation of what it is to experience the world as an artist is invaluable. Um, and we, you know, I, I had mentioned earlier that we all felt safe sharing our vulnerabilities, you know, to a down to, you know, every single person, you know, felt free, you know, who spoke um, to, to share and know that we, they had a, I guess it comes down to the way you really hold space for us um, and make us all feel like the challenges and the growing pains and all the aspects of being an artist that feel that can feel unique to us as individuals, you normalize that for us. And in addition to that, just really give us these amazing tools to, yes, to be able to coach ourselves. I, I don't, I debated after taking what I thought for me would be the ultimate course I, I was you know sort of um feeling as though well I just made this big investment in something that was going to give me both training and maybe some mindset um guidance um and then I'll be able I'll be home free I can go mm -hmm. it wasn't entirely true for me then but I can honestly say that while I might enjoy taking a class to spark a little bit of um, inspiration if I'm feeling dry or if it, if it could feed a specific goal that I have an intention for something I'd like to express, I could do that. But you've given us such a solid framework that we can return to again and again to not only enrich and inform our lives as artists, but just as human beings in the world, there's so much value. So, oh, yes. wow, Susie, that's amazing to hear. That's so, wow. Um, I, I just want to touch on that there, that like you say, that we, we want to do, we want more learning, you know, so uh, we're attracted when there's a nice course that comes up or we might we might actually from going through the process of creative shift I always say you can identify like the gaps in your practice so it might be that you know you decide from this exploration that you need more um work with color but then mm -hmm. you can be very specific about what you go out and choose you're not just going to grasp at courses you can be very kind of solid in your practice and recognize when you want to go outside for things and actually when you just need to sort the things out so you know it's like all the courses we have now there's an abundance you know it's amazing but then it's like what do we do with all that information how is that um integrated into our practice and I really hope that yeah creative shift is the framework that you can keep returning to and sort of slotting these things in um oh that's so <laughs> amazing to hear I, I love listening to you <laughs> Well, it's been an incredible experience and, and I do, um, it's honestly, I can say that, um, much in the same way, my year of concentrated mindfulness training, um, is something that became integrated into how I operate. Not that I don't need to still practice. I do. I'm human. And to keep learning fresh, 
especially when it comes to human behavior, I, I absolutely need to continue to practice. But much of that learning became reflexive over time. And um, your coursework has done the same thing. I have integrated how I, what I learned from you into just how I operate yeah. as an artist. And that's an amazing thing. And it, it doesn't, it definitely doesn't happen um, with everything we do. And, and I think part of it is that, that there's something very essential and yet neglected um, in the instruction you've given to us. Mm -hmm. And I think that's possibly the strongest testament I could give is in terms of value is, is that it does feel essential and make me wonder how, how do people move forward without mm -hmm. that awareness and training? Because it, it feels and I, I know they do, um, but for those who maybe have the good fortune to have somehow picked up these things and can operate and build a, a meaningful um, path and art journey that way, that's that's great. But for you to have actually taken the and to have the ability to step back and to identify those components and not just for yourself, but then to translate that into something that is teachable, that, that you can share, that we can implement. That's, that's really pretty, I'll use a British word and I'll say it's brilliant. And I love the double <laughs> entendre of the brilliance <laughs> of that because it is, it is, it is very unusual. And to be able to have that kind of vision um in addition to having the compassion um for others that makes us feel so comfortable in your classroom <laughs> oh. Yeah. oh Susie that's I'm I'm just delighted that you've taken on the learning so much and it was so impactful for you it's um it's the biggest gift. <laughs> so, oh, right. Well, thank you so, so much for joining me today. Um, once again, I've loved chatting to you and I look forward to continuing to uh, witness your shift. Thank you so much, Sally-Ann. All right. So Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.